Hey folks, this is Alexander Wynn. And I am Lacey Hannon. And we are here for the latest episode of The Synthesis. And right now we're reading our way through The Martian by Andy Weir. And I'm just going to put this out there. You guys, you guys, I'm so sorry. I'm still so congested and so disgusting. So bear with me. It's nothing I can do about it. Yep. Uh, w- this bleh. this week we're talking about <laughs> chapters 17 through 19, uh, and let's dive right in. Let's do it. So uh, chapter 17 starts, and Mark has been told that the Hermes is coming back for him, yes. which on its, its own is a pretty exciting. sweet moment. It's, it yeah. is a very sweet moment. Really, this chapter we start with a really this this sweet this sweet little couple sentences. And then we get into some boring shit for a couple pages. And then things get worse. <laughs> yes. This is a very, this whole yes. episode has a very sort of downward trajectory. Yes, it does. Um, <laughs> yeah. Mm. And, you know, the funny thing is, uh, I, I hadn't really clocked this the first time I read The Martian, but there's this funny sense that the Hermes is coming back and now all of a sudden he has to hurry. You yeah. know, the whole problem in this entire story is that he's stuck there. He has all the time in the world. Now all of a sudden he doesn't. He has to get <laughs> going, which is a funny little inversion of the uh, of the norm there. Uh, it says it ha- he has 257 souls before he has to leave for a 100 soul journey. And just for those out there who uh, aren't familiar with the jargon, a soul is the word for a day on Mars, which so. is 24 hours and about 40 minutes long. So it's not the same length as an Earth day. So they distinguish between days and souls. Yes. So yeah. 24 and a half hours. Yeah. Approximately. That's what he says. Yeah. So we're just going to leave it there. Um, he has a lot of stuff to carry to the rover. Yep. And he makes a Granny Clampett reference uh, about the <laughs> Pathfinder, Pathfinder riding on the roof. And I don't under I've heard that name, but I don't understand that reference. So I feel like that is a reference for the Gen X and older crowd. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not there. I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure that show was in the, like, the 70s. I think so, so yeah. too, but I feel like people that are even yeah. five to ten years older than us are, are going to understand that, and I just... <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and then at one point, yeah, I don't remember why I have this in my notes, but I, I write that this is the part of the book where you get to imagine Venkat Kapoor as one of the Price is Right models and I don't remember why but it reading that note gives me a lot of joy and I all right I, I don't know <laughs> I have I don't, no idea what you're referring I, to <laughs> I think this might be a fever okay, dream no, or a fantasy I'm gonna figure it out Lacey's got a crush on Venkat Kapoor apparently but that's fine uh, you know <laughs> I'm fine I mean, with don't it. we all have crushes on Chiwetelage before I mean, I mean yes you know, absolutely yeah. Um, so we do also get introduced to a very important and uh, potentially horrible piece of equipment, uh, which is the drill. Yes. Mark has to drill his way through the rover to uh, make some extra room and do some modifications. And so NASA has told him to basically drill a whole bunch of tiny holes. We're talking over a thousand holes. So he wires it up to have power so he doesn't have to recharge it constantly, and that is a decision that is going to be consequential. That was, yes. Yes, um, foreshadowing. I mean, the, okay, so I'm not, I'm not finding it fast enough, but there's something in here, because Venkat goes on to explain how he's going to use the rock sampling drill for the construction, and yeah. we, they need to step down the voltage in the rover so it can act as a battery charger for the drill, and it's yet another way that Mark could very easily easily yep. kill himself yeah the uh, quote that i had to just write down in its entirety is i'll be playing with high voltage power tomorrow can't imagine anything going wrong with that <laughs> yes because i mean come on yeah yeah um i don't i i would like someone to tally up how many times mark has been in a situation where he could get killed and yeah. then I would like... You mean aside s- from just the constant danger of being I mean, on Mars? I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah. T- just, just take out the constant danger. Because, like, in all honesty... Because for me, it's about a comparison. I want to know, who is consistently the most likely to die? Just in general. Is it Mark Watney? Or is there somebody on Earth who's like, 
I get it. I hear that he's on Mars and that super sucks. But my job puts me in danger multiple times. You know, like yeah. I want to know because yeah. being does, on Mars. Does Mark is, have the di most dangerous job yeah. in all of humanity? Yeah. Exactly. I was about to because say in like, the world. But. <laughs> right. But like being on Mars, you might compare to a war zone every single day you could die. Mm -hmm. You know? So, yeah. I mean. Yeah, I'm a, I mean, I imagine soldiers have it worse than Mark Watney because there are people actively trying to kill him instead of just an environment that is passively trying to kill him. <laughs> right. Um, so. So uh, for longtime viewers of the census, you will have picked up on a tradition, which is Alexander talking about how this is just one of the things that makes this book great. And here's your latest episode of this is just one of those things that makes this book great, which is how boring the drill is. I really appreciate, I mean, like, it's boring, and it's kind of boring to read, wait, to wait, be wait, perfectly wait. honest. I like, I, like, I like the word choice, because it bores. Yes, because it bores. That was intentional. <laughs> That's certainly not something that I stumbled into <laughs> sideways. Um, that was a good pun, and those are hard to come by. They're not. Lacey loves puns. Don't I believe hate, her. I don't. There's, uh, but the thing about the drilling that i really appreciated is you know he's under constant threat of death there are all these big crazy exciting things happening like the hab blowing up and all these crazy storms and you know like there's so many big scary things the hab is filled with hydrogen and it's a bomb i really appreciate that you know what sometimes you just have to spend like two weeks drilling tiny holes and that's part of this it's not a non-stop adventure. He's not Indiana Jones. Sometimes he just has to drill a whole bunch of really tiny holes. Yeah. And it's just, it, it adds to that sense of realism. It makes everything else more powerful because you recognize that he's not a superhero. He's living a dangerous situation and this is his life. And I just so appreciate how that is rendered. So that I don't seem like a total crazy person. Be who you are. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> So, because I I put that image of Venkat Kapoor in a in beautiful a cocktail dress and yeah, yeah in a beautiful gown yeah. on Prices Right yeah doing the arms yeah yeah um, now that I'm throwing things because it's it's at one point they're talking about how is he going to Mark says how is he going to p make this hole in the rover or aka the trailer. And he says, I'll let my lovely assistant, Venkat Kapoor, explain further. Ah. And that's where it started. And, and then Venkat does, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's actually a lot more interesting. So how do I put this? Uh, Mark must feel really good about not having to be the only person to problem solve. Like, there must be a huge weight off your, his shoulders to not have to do that. But as an audience member, I can feel that way for him and also recognize it's not as interesting. Mm. And I feel like that, that is seen in yeah. this, the beginning of this chapter. So yeah. anyway, I, I imagine he's relieved. I, as an audience member, am not. So before we started filming this episode today, uh, Lacey warned me that she was going to ask me a question, but aha, I scooped you. What's your theme song? Rude, we're not even there yet. I'm there yet. Okay, but like, God, you just skipped to the end of the chapter, no, man. I didn't. This is the middle Whatever. of the chapter. This is Listen, thoroughly I middle. write so many more notes than he did. I was obviously a better student. <laughs> Which... She's not wrong. <laughs> it's not wrong. <laughs> I'm an overachiever. <laughs> yes. Um... Okay, fine. We can jump there, but we're going back no, at some point. Do your thing. Do your thing. Take it away. Okay, okay. But I want to hear what everybody else's theme songs are too. So just yes. just consider For those who that. maybe haven't read The Martian, who have only seen The Martian, by the way, we are referencing a scene in which Mark Watney takes some time to decide what his theme song is from the huge library of disco music. He goes through options such as Life on Mars, Rocket Man, Alone again naturally, but ultimately he settles on staying alive. So, what do you want to talk about? What did I pass over? What interesting thing did I not notice? Okay, so to me... Dazzle us. Oh my God. <laughs> We're going to fight. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, I have a reminder note to myself. Yeah. Duct tape is magic and should be worshipped. 
so says Mark Watney, and I need to stop procrastinating it and putting duct tape in my car because it should always be in your survival kit. It's just true. Oh, just in your car, not like you you don't have a thing to repair. You just need to have access to duct tape. No, I might have told you that Yeah. if I had gotten into an accident that I thought I could repair with duct tape. (laughs) (laughs) Um, There's another thing. He makes a that's what she said joke, and I got really mad at them because they're like, Mark. (laughs) Clutching their pearls at NASA. And I'm sitting here going... Listen, dudes, as stressful as your lives are right now, this man needs an outlet and you're the only people he has. You can go home and you can make off-color jokes to your significant others or your roommates or whoever and and you get to do that. This man has you. So you deal with whatever jokes and whatever he wants to say, you deal with it. Even if it's going to be public because this man needs an outlet and... Defense mechanisms are important. Yes. Actually, that's an interesting point that I had never considered before. Uh, I All of a sudden, I'm kind of wishing that Andy Weir had gone into this a little bit because we are told specifically that NASA is a public agency, which means that everything that they find has to be turned over within 24 hours and that all of their conversations with Mark are being broadcast all over the world. But I'm suddenly realizing that if this were real, if this had actually happened, they would have passed some like exemption or some executive order from the president or something. That guy needs the ability to make private statements. Mark Watney needs to be able to send messages that are not broadcast all over the world. Some yeah. message to his mom or like, you know, something that is personal. That's well, a that's an impo- he- that's a need. Except for, you know, the the things that the rest of the crew talk with their s- SOs with Mm -hmm. those probably are private you know so I'm I'm guessing that there's probably a certain amount of privacy depending on what the topic is I would imagine so but we are specifically told that all of Mark Watney's conversations are public which is why they keep critiquing him when he draws boobs so (laughs) yeah Um, I like it. By the way, we've got a question from everyone's favorite Iman economist. Is Lacey the note taker in your D&D games? No, Lacey likes hitting things with axes. <laughs> I mean, that is mostly that's, what I do. That's but what she's there I for. I also never remember the storyline. Yeah. Not, not for the life of me yeah. actually not for the life uh-huh. okay no, whatever the the, the note taker in our D games is the wife of our game master yeah because even he doesn't take notes half yeah, the time it's, it's pretty funny um but yes i i uh get too into my character to she pay would like attention. to rage yes she would, would like to rage most of the time except for this character is not a barbarian which is maybe why i'm not in love with her yeah. Um, there's a moment in here where he says, uh, oh yeah, that's right. I'm either getting rescued on soul 549 or I'm dying. That means I have 35 souls of extra food. I can indulge once in a while. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that is the brightest <laughs> silver lining I can imagine in what, in what is one of the most terrifying lines in the books. Yeah, that's some Ted Lasso style like optimism. That's yeah. some really that's that's Candide right there. Ooh, I was just my I just I had a whole heart and gut clench yeah. when that happened because I was like you only have 35 days. That's the extra margin. Worth, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like oh boy. Well, and like maybe keep your margin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like we don't want to cut this one too close just in case something I mean, happens. Hard labor is hard labor. You got to, you got to take care of yourself, Yeah, which he does in chapter 18 in a way that I super enjoy, yeah. but okay. I, we are now up All to right. the theme song. Theme and song. Mark Watney's theme song is staying alive. But what did is he yours? Pick, did he pick the right one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Stan Alive by the Bee Gees just annoys the hell out of me. I'm not a fan of the song, but what I'm saying is Life on Mars, Rocket Man, Alone Again Naturally, these are all songs that are relevant, but Stan Alive is both relevant and aspirational. That is what he is working toward. But, okay, so I feel like this man is enough of a hero that he should at least get a soundtrack. Like, he, his life currently warrants a soundtrack and not just a theme song. He has a soundtrack. It was written by Harry Gregson Williams, but, you know. Um, sorry, excuse me. I had something stuck in my throat. Yep, it was a husband. 
Um, uh, that sounded differently uh, than I intended it. Sorry about that, that was, guys. That was a cannibalism reference and nothing else. Oh my God. Somehow you make everything worse. How do you do that? <laughs> oh, I'm it's gonna so be on our mortified. Tombstones. It's going to be on our tombstones. Okay. Alexander Wynn and Lacey Hannon. Oh my God. Somehow you make everything worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. No. Um, okay. All right. So, what's your theme song? It, I I actually referenced it earlier for anybody who's a a Broadway musical fan. Yeah. It's called "Not for the Life of Me" from Thoroughly Modern Millie. It's when she gets to New York, and she knows it. She's like, it's one block north to Macy's, and it's two to Brothers Brooks, and she she has figured it out. And she comes from this tiny town where nothing's over three stories high, at which this is my life, you guys, <laughs> South Dakota to LA. This is, but she has a one-way ticket back home and she mm -hmm. pulls it out of her pocket and she goes, nah. <laughs> and it's just like, yep. I'm going to figure it out. And that's mine. Nice. nice. Yeah. Well, I only had like 45 I'm minutes to think about student, it. I'm a theater student, so just sorry, guys. Uh, I only had about 45 minutes to think about it, and I mostly listen to movie soundtracks. So uh, it's true. ultimately what I settled on is a Jonathan Colton song called Code Monkey. Do you it's, even about a, it's about a developer. No shit. Yep. Code Monkey. What? Yep. I can't believe it. Yep. That's boring. I know. You are so much more interesting than that. I know. I'm disappointed I thought in about you. I thought about going show tunes as well and saying that my theme song was anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> but I decided I didn't want to get punched on Twitch. <laughs> so You would have. Yeah. I would have thrown myself at you and wrestled you. Yeah. And not in a fun way. So some of the bacteria in the soil survived. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um so, uh, we, one, of the, one of the interesting moments that I really appreciate in this chapter is Mark Watney is talking about how, uh, just to pass the time, he did some soil tests, because he's a nerd, uh, and he noticed that some bacteria in the soil survived, which is kind of cool. I loved that. I know, right? Just like resilient. He actually even says, life is amazingly tenacious. They don't want to die any more than I do, which is, yeah, yeah it's a great little it thing, was. you know? Um, um, and then I have, oh my God, Pathfinder, no! Yeah, I have Soul 190. This is the, the beginning of the section, Soul 196. I fucked up. I fucked up big time. And you're just like, oh no, like my blood pressure just shot up. Oh man, what happened? It was a gut punch. Um, yeah. So what happens is now. Yes. I don't totally, you know, so... Uh, well, so, so it starts with a small observation. As he says, the worst moments in life are heralded by small observations. And the small observation is that the breakers have tripped on the drill, which yeah. is odd. And so he just replaces the breakers and moves on. But that's weird. Yeah. I, mm. I found the ending of this chapter. So... So we won't go into exactly what happened, but the Pathfinder is no longer transmitting. Yeah. He, yeah he so he can't, it. he can't, listen, didn't I not just say we weren't going to go into what happened? No. Do you think All they're concerned about spoilers? Hey, you don't know. <laughs> We've right. never gotten an answer from them on who's reading with us and who's not. Fair so, enough. So really, no I guess spoilers. what Lacey's saying is that this is on you. No, that wasn't it at all. Anyway, I'm sticking by it. Okay, whatever. So Pathfinder is no longer um, communicating. So he has no way to communicate with Earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, he can communicate with Earth through Morse code. That's the thing that they yeah. had decided to yeah. set up. He can send messages by putting yes. rocks on the ground. But he cannot hear back from them. Um, so I, I, I found this to be one of those moments of like, do you just collapse in a heap mm -hmm. and just cry and curse the universe like probably i feel like in anime there'd be like a whole bunch of this yeah with streaking lines yes yeah i'm on my own is yeah. the end of that chapter and oof 
And he just got so excited for him because he yeah. didn't have to problem solve all by himself. All alone, yeah. And so then <sighs> chapter 18 starts and I felt entirely like this was my own fault for jinxing it as if this wasn't written years ago. Because <laughs> I was if like... If it makes you feel any better, I blame you too. You uh, are in... What is <laughs> you? You! Uh, oh my God. Iman economist and I'm not going to be able to pronounce uh, Soliste uh, have both read the book. So... Well, yeah. we've got two. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so chapter 18, yes. he's back to making his own plans. It's sort of a return to form yeah. for Mark Watney. He's got to figure this out himself. We are back to the Martian. He's but figuring it, it out. It is so much more interesting to me as an audience member to watch him go through the mental process of, of figuring out how he's going to do things yeah. rather than just getting instructions from NASA because we're not seeing their thought process and their scientific process, yeah. which they get to have more of one than he does. Mm. So I was I was kind of losing interest with all the back and forth. Yeah, it, it so. became less about problem solving and more about solution implementing. And I mean, the, the things that kind of kept you interested were the character development, mm. the, the underhandedness that different characters had, Mitch. Yeah. And you know, like that sort of stuff still kept you interested, but I, for me, the bread and butter of this is who is Mark Watney and what can he do? We know he's not a superhero, yeah. but he's a badass scientist. Yeah. He's an engineer. Like, what, what is his brain capable of? And mm -hmm. we've had a return of that, which is, I don't know, for me, that's the most interesting. So yes. I'm here for it. Agreed. Um, uh, I don't understand some of his plans with the regulator. Okay, uh, like what? No, I don't know. I just, I read it and then <laughs> put it aside. Yeah. I was like, to hell with this. It was, it was all about the, the regulator and it making everything cold to do something and then having to heat it back. Like, I don't know. Yeah. To hell with it. So bas the, the short version is that the, at the oxygenator and the atmospheric regulator, uh, they each draw a lot of power and he has to reduce how much power they draw so that he doesn't just kill his batteries because as much as possible has to go toward traveling um, in the rover. But what he realizes is that each of them have heating functions which are important parts of the process. So the way that they strip the carbon out of the carbon dioxide to make breathable oxygen, they freeze it down and then they run it over a catalyst and it strips away the carbon. But once you freeze it down that cold, if you just release it back in to the air, it's the air conditioner from hell. So I need like a model for this because I just don't see it. But you know, whatever. I, I mean, it just from the outside, it just looks like an air purifier. It's bringing in air and it's blowing out. It's bringing in carbon dioxide. It's blowing out oxygen. But in the in the meantime, it takes that carbon dioxide, freezes it to super crazy cold, runs the super cold gas over some chemicals, some some catalysts. Uh, and that strips the carbon atoms out of the air, and then now you have O2, and so it just blows it back out. But it doesn't just blow it back out because it's way too cold, so it has to warm the air up, which takes a lot of electricity. So Mark realizes, hey, he's still got the RTG, uh, as he puts it, as with most of life's problems, this one can be solved by a box of pure radiation. Which I did find which is very funny. Awesome. Yeah. And so he's going to use that to heat up the air by bubbling it up through hot water, basically. You take cold air, like in a fish tank, with the bubbling oxygen uh -huh. going through the fish tank, super cold air, you bubble it up through hot water, by the time it comes out of the top, it'll be warm enough that it's safe. I so appreciate that he's explaining all of this to me, but I hope someone else caught it because I stopped paying attention a lot of time ago. My focus is not here and I apologize because normally I love your explanations. I yep. really do. I am just, yeah. I'm, I'm incapable today. Right. Um, but what I, I liked the first portion of this plan was, hey, I don't have to have the water reclaimer. Um, mm -hmm. And it's justice. There's justice in this because he's like, I've got enough water. I'll just bring the water with me and I can just shit and pee on this planet that's constantly trying to yeah. kill me. And I was yeah. like, yes, man, you yeah. you tell him. Get it. Uh, <laughs> it I mean, yeah. you're not going to tell the planet much, but 
yeah. Mother Nature. Oh, that's an interesting question. Hmm. Does Mother Nature exist on all planets, or does every planet have a different character? Different character. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I mean, I think probably demonstrably, Earth has Gaia and Mars has Mars. Mars has sure, Aries. but like. What about other which, planets? Which, I'm by so the way, makes sense that this planet is trying to kill him, considering it's named after the god of violence and awfulness. I really so. now need a short story about all of the different versions of... All the different characters of the planets? Yeah. Yeah. I... Someone do this for me. <laughs> Listen, when I request things in here, people people do them. I, You guys, if you have not read Iman Economist's 45 tweet thread on her barbarian that she plays you have to do it i got choked up there's awesome. it's so it's so good and i cannot thank you enough i cannot thank you enough for sharing it Just had to oh put that out there by the way uh while we have you iman economist and everyone else chime in with where you are yeah because iman economist mentioned that uh she watches us on her lunch break which is odd because for us here in LA, it's 5.30 in the evening. So either you have a weird shift or you are somewhere else. So everybody chime in. We love to hear where everybody's from. Yeah. Uh, if you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, comment with where you are. I uh, want to know. Yeah, it's I'm just, curious. It's just fun. The yeah. world is big and interesting. Right? Um, you know what else is big and interesting? Mark's bathtub. Oh, and pirate ninjas. Pirate ninjas, exactly. Mark coins a new unit of measurement, <laughs> the pirate ninja. Because, because of course he did. Because he didn't want to say what? Kilowatt hours per soul. That. Yep. That. Which is, by the way, not even a 50% reduction in syllable count, but whatever. It's no, but better. it's way more interesting. Yes. And it's fun. Yes. And I appreciate it. Yes. Because what is the only thing that could make his situation more dire? The arrival of pirate ninjas. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yes, he, he takes a bath. Yes. And I love this for him and personally. He, <laughs> I love that. Like, this is one of those things that I'm, I love that how in character Andy Weir writes, because he spends a lot of time talking about his bathtub. Like, yeah. this is clearly very important to Mark. A passion project. Yeah, exactly. He goes on and on and on about a, his bathtub and how he made it and how much he loves it and how often he uses it. And it, it really feels like a guy who actually cares about this. It doesn't yes. feel like a novel. It feels no. like you're actually, this guy really loves his bathtub. Listen, listen he deserves it because yes. like he said, there are no chiropractors on Mars. Yes. So he's got to take care of himself and his body and he can't just take Vicodin forever. Yeah, which um, by the way, we've had a running list uh, on this on this show of the sort of alternative universes of the Martian, different ways this could have gone. What if it had been Mark and Lewis stranded on Mars or, uh -huh. you know, those sorts of things. And one of the interesting little versions that's sort of a nightmare to imagine, but it's one way this could have gone is Mark Watney hurts his back and it doesn't get better. Yeah. And, and like, he's just stuck work. on Mars for hundreds of days and there's no saving yourself well yeah yeah like yeah yeah this is uh, that is too depressing can yeah. we not go there Ugh, yeah. um i personally am just very excited for him to take a bath i i don't actually enjoy baths myself mm -hmm. i don't understand i don't understand sitting in in it it just it doesn't it doesn't appeal to me but i love that he got to pamper himself a little as, as chandler bing says what do you just sit there stewing in your own filth yeah kind of <laughs> yeah like no okay serious quote you know what? i'm just gonna ask the question you wash your hair and then you like try and rinse it off but there's already like you've had your shampoo in the water and now you're trying to get your conditioner out and now your hair just feels like Shh. yeah i don't know baths are great for washing your hair like I feel like you're supposed to be able to do all of this. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just think know. it's weird. I am, I know, side sidetracked, but I just, I have questions for the ladies. I think it just sounds awful. Okay. Hey, you know what? We all wash our hair. Thank you very much. I spend so much time caring you guys, for my his, hair. His shaved head, I have hair jokes are, are delightful not funny. and 
she can never get enough of them. Anyway, Mark Watney <laughs> is smiling a great smile. The smile of a man who fucked with his car and didn't break it. I myself have never smiled this smile. I've, I have. You have? I have had to do... Because you're a car thief. A couple of things with cars that yeah. I'm just like, I'm quite proud of. Um, <laughs> listen, I came up with the L brackets a couple log entries ago. And obviously, I'm a genius who should be working at NASA um, and not in Hollywood. But yep. I just wanted to put it out there. When he brings up the L brackets, I was like, yeah, dude, duh. <laughs> and I was quite pleased with myself. And so I think I should be Hollywood's genius it girl yep. personally. But I'm here you know. for it. Um, he does bring up at the end of the chapter an interesting point, which is sort of upsetting, but, you know, that's yeah. just where you are, which is that he's not going to know how the launch went. He's He hopes that Hermes is coming to get him, but he doesn't actually know if it's going to work. Yeah. Like, he might be working for the next, what was it, 357 days, and show up, and then there's nobody waiting for him yeah because 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 pathfinder isn't working yeah he can't he can't know and he you know he's concerned about the hermes resupply not for himself so much but for his crew because he can die but if mm -hmm. his crew dies like that really upsets him and i find mm -hmm. that just so sweet it's just another way of pointing to mark being yeah. a superb human being superb character just mm -hmm. very well written in the fact that the audience never doesn't want to root for him yeah and he can have his his breakdown moments and he can make mm -hmm. off-color jokes and like all of these things but ultimately we're always there for him and he's always there for his crew and it's just so sweet yes so we come to chapter 19 and there's an odd thing that happens i don't know if you if you picked up on this um, we've had about a chapter and a half since Mark fried Pathfinder and is no longer in contact with Earth. And now we come to chapter 19, and chapter 19 has a structure where we're jumping back and forth between the Hermes, where the crew is prepping for the supply launch, and they're all talking to their families back home. And we get this another one of these interesting tableaus where each character gets highlighted individually, uh, and you get some insight into who they are. And then it cuts to Earth as they're preparing for the launch. But they don't mention the fact that Mark is out of contact. We never actually get oh, Earth's response. We never get yeah. anybody reacting to the fact that they can't talk to him anymore. Oh, peculiar. Well, they I just mean, sort of just like continue on with the launch. Far enough, it's far enough beyond when it happens. Yeah. That's probably why. It's just interesting that we never get that moment. That yeah. scene doesn't the, exist. The closest we get to it is in chapter 18 when he says, oh man, I haven't left the hab in six days because of my back. Yeah. And they don't know what's happened to me. Yeah. So they might be panicking essentially. So right. he he kind of fills it in for us what he bit. thinks is... But I feel like it would have been interesting to get Vincat's I mean, like realization of what's going on and yeah, but get yeah, Annie We weren't going to get it in the moment because they were going to stay on Mark. Yeah. So yeah. I'm... I'm, I'm okay with it yeah i think it's the right call but it's a shame because i would have liked to see annie being like are you fucking kidding me right um but yes we cut back to the hermes and uh lewis is talking to her husband who has found <laughs> a uh mint edition a uh, mint you know quality uh version of abba's greatest hits because he's a nerd he's, i have so it right here cute. lewis talking to her husband new abba's greatest hits period nerd it's so cute oh i love that like the the rest of the world is probably on Mark Watney's side making fun of disco and here is Lewis and her husband being like we still love it <laughs> screw you guys yeah. we're right she's she's going to be the most <laughs> infamous disco fan in human history yes. she's I will I will put this out there you guys all of these chats with their significant others or their family members or whatever some of them had Ooh. One of them in particular had me in real tears yeah. and I cried on the book. Sorry, honey. <laughs> and I couldn't read my notes. And so just stopped taking them, but it might come up again because 
oh, it really got, it just so got me. It's something that they do a really good job. You know, we, we get a few of these moments where over the course of a chapter, each character gets the spotlight. You know, there were Mark's notes to each of his crew members uh, or his crewmates. And then in this chapter, we get each of them talking to their families. And it's interesting how Andy Weir does a great job of individualizing them because they each have their own thing going, they each have their own relationships, but they each have, it's like each character is in their own genre, you know? Um, Lewis is talking to her husband, she's very much in love. Uh, Vogel has more of like a family medical drama thing going on. Yeah. It's like each character is has a very different tone in how they are sort of reacting to all of this, and it really helps bring them to life. Yeah, he, he did a very good job of not making he, he's not putting them on too similar, uh, Andy Weir. It's not writing them on like these parallel paths. It's, yeah. it feels very independent of each other. Um, it doesn't, none of the conversations kind of echo one of the previous conversations mm -hmm. or anything like that, yeah. which I've, I found charming that he could write so many different voices. Yeah, I agree. So, he's a great writer. Yeah. <sighs> As um, we keep talking about. Yeah. But anyway. But we cut back to Earth, and, and <laughs> the uh, NASA <laughs> folks are heading to China. Yes. And they are arriving. They're getting ready to launch the uh, resupply probe on the Taiyang Shen, the Chinese rocket. And uh, it's not easy. And Venkat is being a reasonable whiner. Yep. About jet lag. About jet lag. And tells their guide, Mr. Su, that he loves him. <laughs> and I found it darling. He's just so tired and yes. so like doesn't because yeah, Teddy is like, yeah, just don't forget, man, we have to go through customs in you, China. You get the sense and that, you know, Teddy, the director of NASA is probably the guy who like visits the White House periodically. And he like goes to conferences and he's done a lot of networking and all that kind of stuff. And Venkat is more of a stay in the lab kind of yeah. guy. And he's just <laughs> not used to this. Yeah, no. And I just I. I found it just kind of funny. Yeah. Um, From there, we cut back to the Hermes, and we get Vogel, the German oh. astronaut, and uh, talking to his wife about their monkeys, which we have already established is what they call their kids, kids. which is very sweet. Yeah. And then he asks, how is my mother doing? And what oh. we learn is he's af he was afraid before they even left that it was the last time he was going to see his mom. And now... They're going to be on the Hermes for over 500 more days. Yeah. And his wife does tell him that, you know, they think that, you know, she's stable. Yeah. She doesn't Good. always recognize her daughter-in-law yeah. and blah, blah, blah. But nothing has changed. So hopefully nothing will change by the time he gets back. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, I was, like my mom's one of my very favorite people. So I, oh, I was just, yeah. And it was and, a mess. And it didn't even come up when he was saying that we have to go back and get Mark Watney. You yeah. know, like you, you retroactively realize how hard a decision that was for Vogel because he is again risking never seeing his mother. Yeah. And it's, oh, yeah, yeah. that's. And then. Um, so we cut back and uh, Teddy is talking to the Chinese uh, space administrator. And uh, there's a very darling exchange where he d the the chinese guy describes mitch as uh you know very very passionate or something like that and teddy says mitch is a pain in the ass and he says you can say that i cannot <laughs> <laughs> yes i did really like that the thing that i thought you were going to say that i just truly loved was someone says love of science is universal across all cultures yes. and i don't okay listen my pregnancy hormones are out of control this entire chapter made me want to cry and that line i was just like i'm getting choked up thinking about it i don't know there's something about okay <laughs> okay take it away all right um if if i can just provide you with something that will uh harden your heart and make you stop feeling the feelings um jay grape lives in california so oh, do we God. yeah i know he's so close i, I need some <laughs> distance from Jay Grape, oh please. My. Like, Iman Economist lives in Canberra, Austra in Australia. That's awesome. Like, why can't why can't Iman Economist be around here? We gotta have Jay Grape. Well, but listen, huh. she, and she says it's the greatest city in the world, and I'm just putting it out there that I have not been there yet, 
and we, we have visit. Yet, we've got to go. We've got to go yeah. because Australia was awesome. We z- we've we've also got the Eastern United States yes uh, represented. So uh, keep them coming, folks. Post in the comments. Let us know where you are. It's excellent to learn. Unless you're J Grape, and now you oh need my to go God. away. Oh God, dear J Grape, please excuse my husband. He is a jerk. <laughs> God, um, it's not a jerk when you take shots at your nemesis. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. Jake Rape and bad. I are locked in an epic duel. Listen, so you could be like the Joker, and you could love him. Like the Joker loves Batman. I am clearly Batman in this relationship. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. Here. Uh, okay. Clearly, I am Batman in so <laughs> many ways. Um, anyway. So uh, then we, we jump th- to Beck. Yes, we jump back to Beck. Who's talking uh, to his sister. Who I might argue is sort of the least developed of the of the crew. I, th- yes. Beck is the one that I feel like I have the least uh, of idea of. Yeah. yeah. But talking to his sister. And it's kind of funny. He pretty calls clearly a little, like kind of little sister. Not not like five, but. No, but she's, she's younger. Yeah. And, but she's worried about him. Yes. And then she has a lot of questions about Martinez. Yes. And <laughs> the, he, the cute one. He, he's like, uh, he's married with kids. Yeah, home wrecker. Yeah, home wrecker. <laughs> 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 Which just, oh, that got me. Yeah. But then there's a moment where she says, well, what did, you know, she's asking what everybody's jobs are. Yeah. And he tells her that everybody has to be able to do multiple things. And so mm-hmm. she s- asks him, uh, what did Mark Watney do? And he says, don't talk about him in the past tense. Yeah. Of course, I got choked up for that That's too. Great. See, these are the things that like a lesser writer wouldn't have thought to do that. But that is so true to who Beck is. Um, just... That that's the kind of thing that wouldn't be particularly important to the sister, but is important to Beck. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. We're gonna um, we're gonna read you guys like so one of this my. So this is this is Lacey's I think favorite scene in the entire book. It's, is that? I mean, it's not totally because there was that other guy who kind of made the jokes about you can never tell with managers. Well, who was that Rich, again? Was that Rich Purnell? No, that was uh, no Tim. Who's yeah. An asshole? Oh, yeah. so good. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. So this is one of my favorite exchanges. So I'm just going to have us read it. Of course, we've only got one thing. So yeah. good luck to us. Uh, do you? Would you like to take Mitch or Venkat? Uh, why don't I take Venkat? Okay. Right. So you can. Are you going to read just the line, or are you going to say, do the he said she said part? No, just re- just do the line. Okay. Yeah. Uh, All right. They're a weird bunch, these Chinese nerds, but they make a good booster. Good. How's the linkage between the booster and our probe? It all checks out. JPL followed the specs perfectly. It fits like a glove. Any concerns or reservations? Yeah, I'm concerned about what I ate last night. I think it had an eyeball in it. I'm sure there wasn't an eyeball. The engineers here made it for me special. There may have been an eyeball. They hate you. Uh, why? Because you're a dick, Mitch. A total dick. To everyone. Eh, fair enough. So long as the probe gets to Hermes, they can burn me an effigy for all I care. And I just... I, I, I think Lacey's been cackling every time she thinks about that scene. I just love the idea that Venkat is... Like, there's... there. You're just saying there's an eyeball in it because in China they eat things that we might not necessarily eat in America. Like... Don't no. worry about it. And then he's, and then Mitch says, well, the guys made it for me, you know. Special. Special. And then, yeah. and then Venkat's like, yeah. oh, yeah, there was yeah. definitely an eye there in it. There was definitely an eyeball in it. Yeah. <laughs> because you're a dick. Yeah. And I just, there's something so charming about that. And I love it. I mean, not charming. It's, it's horrifying. Yeah. But I like that Mitch is like, okay, whatever. So long as this all works out, they can, they can hate me. They can, yeah. you know do your voodoo whatever you want <laughs> i don't care yeah. um which i which then turns around and shows the dedication that mitch has and you you take it back to that quote about uh you know ted says he's a pain in the ass and ming says you can say that i cannot mm-hmm. and it and the whole reason they're saying that is because mitch has uh has like the the workers the the chinese engineers mm-hmm. have 
mentioned yeah M- mitch's uh, uh work ethic yeah uh, he's very dedicated yep and so it's like <laughs> it just kind of all comes together f- that all of the chinese engineers are probably on teddy's side like yeah screw this dude seriously <laughs> i would fire him if i could <laughs> um so there's i don't know there's just something lovely about it to yeah. me um all right, then we so go back to we Martinez. So we cut back to Martinez, and uh-huh. I'm glad that somebody wasn't perfectly selfless. Martinez's wife is pissed <laughs> that yeah. he's going back to Mars. Yeah. And you can tell that it comes from a place of love. You can tell that it comes from a place of worry. You can also tell that it comes from a place of wanting to get laid, which is hilarious. Yes. Um, but, you know, it's it's nice. It's it's one of those human things that, yeah, not everybody is, like, selflessly telling their, their spouse, yes, you have to spend another year and a half to go back to Mars and save this guy. Like, no, yeah. come home. Because, you know, Martinez is not going to have, his kid is not going to have any memories of him yeah and he's going to be going into kindergarten by the time martinez comes home so you and that's if he comes home at all yeah exactly so there's like this you, you kind of understand the power of what they're dealing with because vogel's kids are in high school it's not to say it's any that's got its own hardships mm-hmm. um essentially being a single mom of of teenagers like i can't Im- yeah. um sorry to my mom um <laughs> but you know melissa's dealing with a toddler at home and that's just got to be really hard especially when you weren't expecting to have to do all of this mm-hmm. so to me the the different there i love that they're all in kind of different stages of their lives and that they have yeah. different concerns and this was this was lovely i love that they're high school sweethearts yeah um i don't do we jump back to uh, China, or do we just go straight into I don't have any notes from China, so, so if we did, we it was uneventful. Ahead. And so now we come to Johansson. Johansson, Johansson oh who is, you know, the, the, the cute girl of the crew who nobody's allowed to hit on, and, you know, posters all over, uh, you know, college students' bedrooms and all that, and you get dark oh, fast. so dark. And she's, like, talking to her... Dad, to her dad, who yeah. is like, uh, is where did we go wrong? You were yeah. such a good kid, and now you're doing this, and your mom is worried sick, and she can't even like. It, this he, is a mom who's obviously like her anxiety or depression or whatever she's dealing with is so bad that she can't even come to the, the phone. Call, yeah, you know, well, and and the the father is characterized interestingly because you know you get the sense that he's not. He's kind of a hard ass like he's not necessarily the kind of dad that you would want like he kind of hits her over the head with guilt over all of this and Uh he's pretty rough and she tries to reassure him in these vague terms and he's not getting it and she keeps trying to reassure him in these I mean I wouldn't get it either she's being very good at being vague about why it's going to be okay like I will make it I'm not gonna die she just keeps saying I won't die and he's like what are you talking about and she says I won't die and finally he gets her to tell yeah, him which i thought this was this was kind of telling i i hear you on the hard ass thing but he says i have never i've always let you had your privacy yes and you i've never pushed you yeah. and i need to know what you're talking about yeah and he's clearly not an abusive father no but no yeah but he's he's he, calling he's, in his his favor to know what she's saying and what she's uh, saying is that if the resupply mission goes wrong, they're going too fast. They won't be able to slow down and stop at Earth. They're going to Mars one way or another, but they might not have enough food. So Lewis brought them all together and told them the plan, which is that if the resupply mission fails, everybody but Johansson will take suicide pills, and then Johansson will survive and eat through the stores of food and then when her father asks is that going to be enough she says no but the food won't be the only sustenance available and oh damn that gets dark oh my god i just like (laughs) i just started sobbing yeah i was (laughs) he didn't notice I was I, I was working on other things. I know, I wasn't no, just like being uh, this, neglectful. This wasn't this wasn't his fault. But he's like sitting across the table from me, and I'm just like trying not to be noticed as tears are just streaming down my face onto the book. 
<laughs> as I'm just like, oh, this is horrifying. But now I have a question. Yeah. Can you eat a body that has had a suicide pill go into it? Uh, I'm sure Lewis knows what, you know, something that something that expires after a little while <sighs> so that it would be safe or whatever. Maybe just like doesn't um, get into the muscle tissue or something. Yeah, something it like that. Or, or, it get, or, you know, she would probably need to freeze the bodies so maybe it, it breaks down and in cold or something like that but whatever it is i'm sure andy weir has thought through every single detail of this absolute oh. horror movie that could have been this I is the darkest timeline of all the alternative universe martian stories and like i i obviously could barely handle it still can barely handle it yeah but then we get to the launch yeah and we get through the piloting the great piloting that martinez does you get. And the masterful bringing you back from the brink of darkness, Andy Weir knowing exactly how to lead his yeah. audience where they need to be. Martinez <laughs> sticks the launch, they get the supplies, they're good to go, and he turns around to Johansson and says, so who would you have eaten first? Like, oh my God, and she and doesn't she want just, it. She, wants she will it. not engage, uh-uh. and he starts chasing after her going, hey, I'm free range, you know, corn fed. Come on, I thought you liked Mexican." <laughs> And I was just like, that's such dark humor. It is so dark, but like simultaneously, I am so glad that we are included it because yes. I needed. Yeah. It takes need, the fangs out of. Yeah. Oof. And we don't just get Johansson's reaction to it. Yeah. We get everybody else has, you know, essentially agreed to it. Yeah. Agreed ish. Yeah. And this, it's a release of the tension in a way that, I needed, Oof, I yes. needed that. So. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, the only person who could have had a h- worse time of this than Mark Watney is Johansson. Johansson, yeah, yeah. That, oh, no. I don't yeah. do post-apocalyptic. So this, that is not the storyline that I can engage I can with. Engage with. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. No horror, no apocalyptic anything, yeah. which is what that would be, I yes. mean, if you're in space. Yeah. Like, yeah, oh, just, God. Oof. And kind of zombies. Yeah. Gross. The worst part of everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's the end of chapter 19. So that is the end of this episode of The Synthesis. Uh, next week, we're going to be doing chapters 20, 21, and 22. And uh, important note, everyone, make a note uh, that oh, starting yes. next week, we are going to be shifting venues we and think. seeing how that works. We're yes. Rather than streaming live on Twitch and then mirroring to YouTube on uh, Friday morning, we are going to be doing YouTube Live. Uh, same bat time, different bat channel. We are going to be doing same 5.30 time slot that we always do, except we're going to be doing YouTube Live from the Edgeworks Entertainment YouTube channel, which is, edg- which is youtube.com slash Edgeworks Entertainment. So if, if that turns out to not be true and we can't do it next week, we will yeah. let you know. We will put it on all of our socials. Yeah. Um, but we wanted to, we're, we're going to try and make that changeover pretty quick. Yeah. So join us, please. Join us on YouTube. And uh, we'll Everybody you. except Jay Grape. Jay Grape, tune in on Twitch next week. Oh my God. Um. <laughs> I'm just, oh, all right. <laughs> I don't. I'm. Yeah. I don't know what to say, Jay. Yeah. I. L- I'm sorry. Lacey literally can't even. Um, so tune in next week, YouTube Live, and we're gonna have a dab do time. So in the meantime, uh, be sure to check out our Patreon page, uh-huh. Edgeworks Entertainment. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube and everywhere in the world, really. And apparently. Apparently, uh, Edgeworks is moving to TikTok. Uh, yeah, we're God have bless a, our marketing people because yep. there's not, th- you could not get me on there. Yeah, I'm too old for that shit. <laughs> yep. Except for the sea shanties. Oh uh, my except God, for the, the sea, sea shanties. shanties. The sea shanties are amazing. They might get me there. Uh, one final note for everyone to keep in mind. Uh, anybody who is a long-term Edgeworks fan knows that every year, the anniversary of Edgeworks' founding is February 9th. And I'm not ready to tell you anything about it, but uh, the smart money is on uh, there being an announcement of some kind on February 9th. So So get stoked. Be sure to check out our social pages or edgeworksentertainment.com. Get your popcorn. Yeah, get get your popcorn and uh, get ready for a cool announcement. So, yeah. All right. 
Otherwise, we will see you next week on YouTube Live. Bye, guys. Bye.